Investments in securities market are subject to market risks. Read all the related documents carefully before investing. Every investor wants to know where to put their money so that they can make a good return and grow their wealth. Product selection is an important part of this process and we tend to focus a lot of our energies in product selection. So we are always trying to find the best investment, what is the best thing to do at this point and to time the market. But there are some mistakes that we tend to make in product selection which can actually affect our wealth creation journey. Instead of always trying to ask which is the best product to invest in, let's try to invert that question and try to understand what are the mistakes that investors make when they select products. The first and the most obvious mistake that many investors are guilty of is chasing performance. So when we see an investment that has a really great track record, we're very tempted to participate in that investment because it looks like there's proof that it's a good investment. After all, one, three and five year returns are great, showing us that this is a stable and predictable kind of investment. But markets are hardly ever stable or predictable and they can be full of surprises, which is why past performance is not a great measure of how to select a good product. The second important thing that investors miss out is that although they do study returns, they fail to analyze what is the source of these returns. The source of returns matters a lot when you're choosing a product simply because you need to understand why this performance has come in and whether it is sustainable or not. So for example, if you're looking at an equity investment, you might want to understand whether this performance has come because of cheap valuations in the past, because there's a lot of momentum in that particular idea or whether there's been an actual growth and re-rating within that company. When we understand these things, we'll be better prepared for risks and rewards that are available in the future. This doesn't apply only to equity, it applies to fixed income as well. So if you're looking at a fixed income strategy, in certain cycles, you might see that performance is because of taking duration calls, which works when you're moving from an upward or a higher interest rate level to a lower interest rate level. The same call is unlikely to work when interest rates are moving in the opposite direction. Similarly, sometimes you make great returns because of credit spreads, because at one point in the cycle, spreads uh, were quite wide and because you've had better performance, better lending standards, and uh, you see those spreads compress. So then you get um, extra returns in that segment as well. So when you're looking at the sources of performance, you have a better understanding of whether this kind of performance is repeatable or not. The third area where we tend to make mistakes in product selection is that we tend to ignore sub-asset classes. So for example, when we look at uh, investors today who are very keen on participating in equity, they tend to be allocated more towards small and mid caps. This is partly because of their stellar past performance track record, but also the hype around being a long-term investor and wanting to create wealth. When you look at only one part of the equity market, uh, you're ignoring the other sub-asset classes. So uh, sub-asset classes could be things like looking at uh, maybe blue chips within the same asset class of equity or looking at global where you might have uh, the underlying instrument is still equity but you have a different geographic exposure. When we start understanding the power of sub-asset classes, product selection can actually be more holistic and help us manage risk better. What are some other great ways to pick products? Why don't you tell us in the comments?